Welcome back to Coffee Time. Today we're going to take a little different tack. Instead of looking at one particular website or app or tool that uh, I think might be of interest to teachers, I'm going to take time to answer a question that comes up to me quite often, both at my school and when I'm out doing uh, professional development at other places. And that is, basically, what do I need? If you could narrow it down and, and come up with the bare minimum, Teachers are busy. They're very busy. And to learn all this new stuff, nobody's going to have time to learn it all. Not even me. Um, and so what are, the, what are the core elements? Where can I start and know that I've got enough stuff going on that I can truly integrate technology into my classroom? And so that's what we're going to look at today. So grab a cup of coffee, pull up a chair, let's take a few minutes, and I'm just going to kind of glance through a few things and tell you why I think they're important. And then we'll go from there. One of the first things, my glasses on so I can actually see my computer screen. One of the first things that I think every teacher ought to use is something like Symbaloo. Uh, Symbaloo is a great tool that allows you to put together a list of websites. Um, you can group them by theme, you can color code the tiles so that each color is, you know, maybe if you're in an elementary classroom, maybe the orange tiles are math, the green tiles are language arts, kids learn to know that. You can share these, so once you create one, you can send the link out. If you've got a few computers in the back of your class, make this your home page. Um, there's an app, put on your iOS device, put on your Android device so that students have access to these very quick, very quick uh, links to use. And just to show you a couple that I, that I have uh, saved here, uh, here's a, a page that I put together of nothing but things to edit images, to create or edit videos, photography and video stuff, all on this page. Um, another one over here that just got shared with me just recently um, from the Den Vice uh, Smackdown, App Smackdown on uh, Facebook. They came up with this great list and shared it out for everybody. It's a great way to put things together, share quickly. I think every teacher ought to be using Symbaloo. Um, the other thing that every teacher needs is some place to create a classroom. People use Blackboard, they use Moodle, they use um, uh, there's a number of things out there. Me, I started with Edmodo I love Edmodo. I stick with Edmodo. Here are the things that I can do by using Edmodo. First of all, I can put all of my kids in a class. Once I've put them into a class, I can lock that class down. Nobody else can enter if I don't want them to enter. Um, it gives me security in the fact that these kids that log in cannot send private messages to one another. They can only send messages to me or they can send messages to the entire class. I can set up subgroups. So if I have kids working in small groups, I can set up within the class three, four, five kids in a subgroup. And then those kids can work on their materials, share things, collaborate, communicate at home, at school, wherever they're at. And again, they can either send out something to the entire subgroup or they can send something out to me. They cannot chat one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the beautiful things about Edmodo, as it continues to grow and morph and become even more um, usable and manageable, um, I can create assignments in here. I can create quizzes. It will save those assignments and save those quizzes so that if I want to do that same assignment again next year, I just click a button, boom, it's in there. So once I've, once I've created it, it never goes away unless I want it to. Um, the other thing is it has an unlimited library space. So as long as my file is not greater than 100 megabytes, I can upload a million files if that's what I need to do. I can organize them in folders and share those folders between classes. So if I upload, if I have, say I'm a high school teacher and I've got five classes that I'm teaching, I can put one folder, I can upload a document, put it in that folder and share that folder to all five classes and everybody has it automatically. Updates, syncs. There's an app for iOS. There's an app for Android. If you're on the iPad, I recommend that you don't use the app. Just go to the website. I think it works better. Um, 
In addition, there are a lot of apps within Edmodo that you can begin to use. And there's uh, a couple of things that I'm trying out now that we'll try to talk about a little later on down the road. Um, and I can send out uh, alerts. I can send out uh, quizzes. Uh, just a number of things I can do. There's not enough time for me to talk about it all here. Again, if I'm in younger age classes, elementary classes, middle school classes, Every student has a parent code as well, so I can get parents to log in. The parent can see me. They can see their child. They don't see anybody else, but they can keep up with their work. Edmodo is now tied directly to your Google Docs account, uh, Google Drive account, I should say. So if you create a document there, you can go find it and insert it very quickly. Um, and we'll talk in a, in a moment about um, Socrative. Socrative is automatically tied to Edmodo as well and, and some other things like that. So I think every teacher needs a Symbaloo account. I think every teacher needs to be using Edmodo. The other thing that I'll just, well, while I have it up here, let's just go here. You need some kind of way to be able to do quick on-the-fly assessments that kids can get to with pretty much any device. There are a lot out there, and I, and I would recommend using two or three, but I think the bare minimum is something like Socrative. Socrative uh, is a free site. You can put up to 50 kids in one class at a time. You can create uh, quizzes on the fly. So let me just pull up this demo here to show you kind of how that works in case you've never been here. Um, and you'll see on the left-hand side is the teacher device. And on the right-hand side is the student device. So this is in the form of an iPhone. This could be any smartphone. Um, it could be any smartphone. It could be an iPad. It could be online on a computer. But the student enters the number. You'll see the number here is 262825. And they join the room. And they just sit there waiting on the teacher to do something. And so the teacher says... Um, Okay, I'm going to ask you a question on the fly. I'm just going to put some responses up here on the board, um, and I want you to choose A, B, C, D, or E. Put it up on your PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint file, smart board, uh, uh, Active Inspire board, however you want to show it to them, and the students say, okay, I'm going to choose C. Once that's done, and everybody has, and you'll see here, it will count here for you the number of votes. I only have one student in the class, everybody's voted, and so I end that activity. I move on. I can also set up a quiz. So let's say we're going to start this pre-made quiz, um, and I'm going to do the demo quiz, and it's going to be student-paced. So by student-paced, as the student answers a question, it automatically goes on to the next question. If I make it teacher-paced, then everybody waits on me to go to the next question. So depending on how you want to do this quiz, in the classroom. So I'm going to do it um, as student-based and there are five questions here. I'm going to run through them very quickly. I'm going to get one of them wrong just on purpose. So here's my name and I submit that. Next question. Which of the following American presidents was not a K-12 or college teacher? Well I know that was Ronald Reagan but I'm going to choose John Adams just so that I can get it wrong. We'll show you immediately wrong answer. Next question. Who was Socrates? Socrates was a philosopher. I got that one right. Good job. This is the Socratic, Socratic method, um, but it's a short answer, so it doesn't automatically grade it. I have to go in and grade that myself. And will technology improve education? This is an opinion question, and so there is no right or wrong answer. I'm going to finish the quiz. It tells me over here on the teacher module, all of my students have finished this quiz. I'm going to end the activity. Now, I have the ability to export this immediately to my Edmodo gradebook, or I can just download the report, and you see it happen just that fast. If I open this up, it will give me all of the answers. Here's the student name. Here are my answers, and red tells me I got it wrong. Green, I got it right. This is one I have to grade myself. It's not colored. Boom. I've created a quiz. Kids have taken the quiz with their cell phones, and I am good to go. Um, so some type of interactive quiz method. There are quizzes built into Edmodo, yes, but Socrative allows you to do some things that's much easier than that. Um, 
exit tickets and other kinds of things that you can do on the fly. Um, so it's good to have both kinds of things. So I'm going to close this out. And the other thing that I think every teacher needs to have, by all means, is Evernote. Evernote allows me to create notebooks, and inside notebooks, I create notes, pages, okay? Um, and so there are a number of things I can do here, but the biggest thing that I want to put out is, as a teacher, I can do two things here that are very important. One is, I can create a notebook that has all of my class assignments in it, course syllabus, worksheets, and I can add to them as I need them. They don't have to all be there at once. But once I create that and I share that out to my students, every time I update it, it's automatically updated to their Evernote account. So if at the end of the day today, I need a worksheet for them to do at home tonight for homework, I put it in my Evernote account, they go home, sync their files, boom, worksheet's available, they can work through it. Um, I can create my own coursework this way. I could do my own textbook this way. Um, I'm using this uh, as a way to get professional development out to teachers so that as I start to do training modules, I add a note every so often. And when I do, it updates into their Evernote account and they have the new training available. The other side of that is your students can create a notebook. Let's say they're in an Algebra 1 class. A students create a notebook that says Childers Algebra 1 or that puts their name in it John Smith Algebra 1 and they share that notebook with me. Now every time they do work in my class and they put it into their Evernote notebook it syncs automatically to my files. I don't have to have it emailed to me. I don't have to take up papers. I can do whatever I want with that. If I'm on a device let me just I'm gonna take a moment here let me just a second and let me pull up my iPad so that you can see how this works that way. I'll be right back. Okay, so on the iPad side, and again, Evernote works on laptops, Macs, desktops, iPads, iPhones, Androids. There's an app pretty much for every operating system you can imagine. So I'm in a one-to-one -one iPad school. My kids open up Evernote. And so if I come in here and I show you, um, let's go to, if I can find the one I want. Here's one I was working on just the other day, Magnet Schools of America. I took my iPad on a tour of a high school. And as I'm going on the tour of the high school, I'm just holding up my, my iPad and taking pictures and putting them straight into this note so that I can go back later and add some text and talk about what I was doing. Not only can I insert pictures, but I could also come in, let's say I'm back up here at the top, and um, I'm going to, let's see if we can give me some space here. I could also come in here and say, okay, I want to put something in for my camera roll. Okay, so I could insert a document from somewhere else. I can also record if I can get that to work properly. So you'll see it's counting down now. You can see the, the bar moving as I'm talking. It's recording an audio note in Evernote itself. Again, once I have done that, and I'm a student, one of the things that I've seen out on uh, Facebook and Twitter and others is students who bring a reading assignment into Evernote and they read it into the audio to be able to test their uh, reading fluency. And so <clears throat> once they've done that, and that automatically syncs to me, I could be sitting at home at night listening to my students read in kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Um, or if I'm a foreign language teacher, I could be listening to them from the comfort of my living room, going over whatever they were, um, whatever foreign language they were doing in my classroom, listening to them speak the language or translate the language. All of that within Evernote automatically syncs. So I think every teacher needs to have Evernote. So we're talking about Symbaloo, Edmodo, Socrative, Evernote. And one other little app I think that's also important, I'm going to um, flip my thing here where I can get this going right. And I don't know exactly where this app is, but Notability 
is one that I think every teacher will want. Notability will allow students or yourself to bring in documents and just write over them. So let's say that I have a new note here that I want to start. Um, I can come out here and I can say, okay, I'm going to add a photo and I'm going to add it from here. Um, and I had one here that I wanted to put in. Let's see if I can find it again. This one right here. Okay. So it inserts the photo. I'm going to make it big enough where I can use it. So here is the note. In Notability, I can come up here with the pen tool and I can draw different things on the note. I can circle things that might be important to me. I can take the highlighter tool and I can highlight. I can hold onto the highlighter tool and change colors if I want to highlight something else in a different color. If I don't like that, I can take the eraser tool and just touch where I went and all of that is erased. Okay. I can also, again, record. So it is now recording my sound. You'll see it's counting down up there. And as I'm talking, I can again draw in here different things that I'm talking about. I can take and highlight over things while I'm talking so that as, I, as a student is listening to this document that I send them, let's say that I'm editing a paper they sent me or I'm looking at homework assignment and they got a math problem wrong, and in Notability, I can go in and talk to them over the audio and write out the problem and show them how they should have solved it and send it back to them, and now they have my immediate academic feedback. So uh, these are tools, I think, that are extremely important um, and, and necessary. I think if I had, you know, I mean, you know, in our system, we use DE assessment, DE streaming, those kinds of things. Those are givens, things that the district's going to buy for you or whatever. But in the classroom, the things that I think are bare minimum the teacher should have, Symbaloo, Edmodo, Socrative, or something like Socrative, something like Edmodo, um, Evernote, and something like Notability. If you had those things, the only other thing that I would think about adding is something like what I'm using right now, which is Camtasia. Camtasia is $75 for the Mac version. I forget what the Windows version is. Um, for educators, that's a discounted price for educators. With Camtasia, I can create these kinds of videos and I can create them very quickly. If I don't have the money to, to spend to buy Camtasia, I could always use something like screencastomatic.com or screener.com. There are apps for my iPad like Show Me or um, Show Everything or Explain Everything, I think is the other one. Something that I can create a video to put out there to students to be able to give them some type of instruction or show them something. Because sometimes being able to talk to them is easier than being able to, um, e easier than just sending them something in writing. Um, so, these are the things that I think about. I don't know what you think. Uh, you're more than welcome to put something in the comments or send me an email. Let me know what are the bare minimum things that you think a teacher needs to have in the classroom to make a classroom work integrating technology. Until next time, enjoy the coffee. We'll see you then.